Thank you for staying with us. Now we're going to switch our attention, still um, looking at the COVID-19 uh, updates, but um, this time around we've been joined uh, by Dr. Ade Jobi Adeloye. He is a medical doctor with a postgraduate in public health care management who currently runs a mobile healthcare group and management firm. He is a life coach, a public speaker, a business consultant, employment facilitator, and emergency response program um, manager. It's a pleasure to have you um, on the program. You're joining us via Skype from Winnipeg in Canada. Thanks again for joining us on the program. Thank you, viewers, and welcome. Yeah, of course. Um, so um, we're looking at how technology can, can play a part in all of this now. Telemedicine can, 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 uh, or kind of or seems to be like the, uh, the next best thing that can happen to uh, people at the moment. But what's your thought on that? The thing is, um, most, most communities right now are currently underserved. And the global phenomenon, the, the thing that is happening right now in the world is even making it uh, tighter. You know, a lot of people want to have access. Access to care is seriously uh, a, a point of concern. People want access to medical care. People want access to essential services providers. People even want access to see the doctor. And the, the healthcare professionals don't want, especially those living in the third world countries, don't want um, uh, to, to be exposed to the risk of what is going on right now. So. Uh, with telemedicine, you can access your doctor, you can access your healthcare, you can access somebody that is going to help you, you can access someone that is going to buy the drugs, you can even access your prescription refills. I can imagine people that have elderly that want to take care of, uh, for, or people that want to access their regular prescriptions, um, maternal uh, issues, uh, antenatal issues, even common non-COVID uh, issues uh, right now can have access to their healthcare continuum of care through telemedicine, telemedicine. or telehealth practices. So, so, so that's, that's the thing. That's yeah, yeah, so that's the thing. People just keep hearing telemedicine, telemedicine, telemedicine. You know, how can I access telemedicine? Are there applications? Um, are there softwares yes. that I can, I mean, can you give us examples? Yes. Yes, uh, one that we built is called Novadoc, N-O-V-A-D-O-C. It's available on Play Store and App Store. You can, you can download it on your phone. Every smartphone um, has a store where you can uh, access uh, this kind of um, service. Now, even if you don't have a smartphone, you can still access uh, with our program. You can access such care uh, through USSD codes. We devised uh, a USSD code such that with any phone, so far you have anything that can make and um, place a call or can send a text. You can access uh, Novadoc services. We, what we did was we placed and we partnered with a few uh, health maintenance organizations around the world, and we onboarded them as providers on our platform. So those are the closest to the people. Those are the closest to underserved communities, and that's what you know, we're trying to replicate in Nigeria. All right, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Adeloe. You joined us from Winnipeg in Canada. Joining us now is Tito Ovia. She is a health tech entrepreneur and a public health um, professional. She joins us via Skype um, in Lagos. Um, Tito, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Of course, you're welcome. So quickly, we're looking at the cases uh, that we're having in, in, in the country. I mean, they keep rising on a daily, and we're thinking of ways that um, you know, we can implement to ensure that they don't go beyond where they are. But also, we're looking at the, um, the, the health um, care system. How robust would you say it is to take care of what we have side by side with other ailments at the moment? So, unfortunately, something that we've seen, or this pandemic has sort of, I guess, pulled the wool over everybody's eyes, is that you know, our health care system is really lacking and it's really inefficient. Um, to be very honest, a lot of healthcare systems around the world have been seen to be inefficient. Italy, Spain, United Kingdom, the US. Um, I think that one of the clear differences between Nigeria and those care healthcare systems um, is the human capital, human capacity. Um, so, for example, the US can throw hundreds of millions of dollars at you know, buying you know, new equipment, ventilators, so can these other nations. Um, and, you know, we can, to some extent, do that as well in Nigeria because it's just money, right, to be able to buy and spring up new isolation centers. However, where we really lack um, and we've always lacked is having enough healthcare workers to be able to, you know, take care and deal with a pandemic of this size. 
um, because overnight, you know, there's no amount of money that you have as a nation. You can't sort of grow a healthcare workforce um, overnight. Um, and, you know, this is something we've discussed in Nigeria's healthcare system for, you know, years I and mean, in decades about the brain drain that is currently going on in our healthcare system, where everybody is going to the United States or Canada, um, so on and so forth to go and practice medicine. Yeah, so pretty much, how how can how can we get them to come back? Because it seems we're on a on a on a um, on a tightrope now. So is getting them back a possibility quickly? Honestly, getting them back right now for this pandemic, it's it's not possible. Um, you know, again, you know, there are strict flight rules. People traveling back and forth. Every country is trying to keep their own resources that they have. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have to just make do with what we have, honestly. Um, you know, people can try and do telemedicine and advise, but let's, to physically get healthcare workers in, we can't. Let, let's, let's hope um, that works uh, for us at the moment, and we just have to be hopeful. But I have to say thank you for joining us again um, on the program, Tito from Lagos. Well, let's take a look at the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. This week's most viewed videos begins with the closed prayer grounds in Ogun State as a festival marking the end of the month of Ramadan was celebrated. It is followed in fourth by a different scenario in Katsina State, Northwest Nigeria, where the reverse was the case. Third place sees the threat to parents over Amajure in northern Nigeria by Governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasser Erefai. We are going to monitor these children well. We will track each and every one of them very, very closely to ensure that their parents um, uh, don't let them go again. And any parent that does that would be prosecuted and could go to prison for as many as two years. The claim by an official of the Kogi State Government that the coronavirus is a fraud takes the second spot. When there was no case in Kogi State, they did all they could to ensure that Kogi has a case. They are locking down the country, they are advising uh, the presidency uh, to lock down the country, the economy is suffering, the economy is bleeding, people are hungry. Other elements are killing Nigerians while they are concentrating on, an, uh, on a pandemic uh, that has killed less uh, people than malaria has killed in the last few months. And the most viewed videos in the past week is a cry by residents of a community in Anambra state over the threat of an erosion threatening to wipe them out. And that's the program. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Victor Mathias. Bye for now.